For the vast majority of people, it's commonly known that there are multiple ways to write languages on our planet. You have the Latin alphabet that's used to write many European languages, those in Africa, and essentially all around our world. Which begs the question, how many of these writing systems do we really have on our planet? And as a follow-up question, which of these is the most unique? Let's just dive right into it and learn about language. Before diving into this, we really have to understand what is a writing system. In place of writing system, there's a term we commonly use mistakenly, and that's alphabet. Actually, an alphabet is just one way to write language. We have many other families of writing systems, like abugidas, syllabaries, abjads, and even logographic systems. I'll start with alphabets because these might be the most commonly used and most frequent in our society. An alphabet is a writing system that commonly uses one icon to describe a sound in that language. We can look at a few examples to really understand the bigger picture of what an alphabet is. The most commonly occurring alphabet on our planet is the Latin alphabet, which is used by many European languages which spread around the world through colonialism, and also through colonialism it spread to countries that adopted this writing system. Take Vietnamese and Yoruba in Nigeria, for example. There are many other alphabets, such as the Cyrillic used to write Russian, the Greek alphabet, which Latin and Cyrillic came from, the Armenian alphabet, which is one in only four in Europe, and the fourth being Mkhedroli used to write the Georgian language. So those are just a few examples of alphabets. But if we want to look further into how many writing systems there are, we have to examine these different families. Let's go towards Abagidas. To understand what these really are, let me give you a few examples to create a bigger picture. Abagidas are commonly written in South Asian countries such as India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, but there are many exceptions which I will mention later. Let's take a look at a few examples of this to kind of wrap our minds around uh, the differences. Probably the most widespread in this family would be Devanagari, which is used to write many of the languages in India, and there are many offsprings of this too. And if you go further east in the South Asia, you encounter writing systems such as Javanese, which is spoken on the world's most populated island of Java in Indonesia. This writing system is very similar, and it uses an Abagita-style system. Essentially, these Abagita writing systems are when you add vowels, not as separate letters, but on the top and bottom of these words. Another example of this would be Tibetan, and as I said, there are occurrences of this outside of South Asia, such as the Ga'e script of Ethiopia, and Cree syllabics used to write the Inuktitut language of Northern Canada. Another way you can write these languages is using syllabaries. Now, where abogidas have one letter to describe a sound, syllabaries have one to describe each sound and vowel pair. Two common examples of this writing style are the Cherokee alphabet of the Midwest of the United States and the Hiragana alphabet of Japanese. Both of these writing systems have memorizable charts of a consonant and vowel combination. Going from syllabaries, which emphasize a lot of importance in the vowels of a language, we go towards abjads, which do almost the exact opposite. Instead of writing every vowel out individually, often writing systems leave these vowels out of the sentence like Hebrew and Arabic, for example. And of course there are ways to write them, but in common writing, it's not very frequent. Most writing systems like this are centered around the Middle East, like the one to write Aramaic, or the Assyrian language, but they're not often abundant outside of this region of the world. We can see that writing systems are actually very similar to language, as they all derive from these large families and also have offsprings of their own, like the Latin alphabet from Greek. One more family we can cover is the logographic writing systems. Logographic systems, opposed to all of the other ones we covered, 
don't really follow any grammatical rules as to write their language, but rather they're based off of ideas and pictures. Writing systems like Mayan and Chinese have these pictographic systems to write their language, and these are often the hardest to learn as a foreign speaker. So the question we began with to start this investigation was, how many writing systems do we have in our world? And the answer is about 50. The reason why I say about 50 is because there are language systems that derive from others and are very similar that it's almost mistakable as a dialect of the language writing system. Uh, common examples of that are the Bangla script of Bengali, which is very similar to the Devanagari script, same with Nepali. Although these are very different and they do have separate icons, including adding different letters, taking away letters, it generally approximates to about 50 as to what I've counted. Another question I asked at the beginning of this video was, what is the most unique writing system? What's come to my belief is that the Cree writing system of northern Canada might be one of the most bizarre writing systems, as it came through a result of trying to create a very simple alphabet to learn while also reflecting science. And that might be the reason why it looks very geometric in a sense. On our planet, writing systems overall are very abundant, but also very widespread. When traveling or going to different countries, destinations, etc., it's very easy to learn these writing systems to make your way around. And it shouldn't be too difficult of a task if you're ever trying to learn one, except for many languages that are logographic and Really the only one that's in common use is Chinese. And uh, that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something about language.